Hello everyone, this is Kimberly Joy, and in a few moments I will be recording for my radio show, The Kimberly Joy Show. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Kimberly Joy, and I thank you for tuning in to the Kimberly Joy Show. I am truly grateful to God for another opportunity to share an inspiring message with you. But before I share today's message, I want to let you know that my mother, First Lady Pastor Jerry Banks, has a show on the station as well. It's called Power and Faith Today, and you can hear her Wednesdays at 4.45 p.m. and Saturdays at 10.30 a.m. I encourage you to tune into her program. You will truly be blessed. Also, you can catch the encore of my show on Saturdays at 6 p.m. In addition, I welcome you to email me at kim underscore joy73 at yahoo.com and to visit my blog at thekimberlyjoy.com. My personal motto is know yourself, be yourself, love yourself. Although Father's Day was a couple of weeks ago, I don't want to close out this month without addressing the fatherless, or at least those of you who are not necessarily fatherless, but feel like you are. I don't know what it's like to not have a father, but what I do know is that God the Father is able to fill any voids we may have in our lives. Philippians 4 and 19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. When I read that scripture, it means more to me than just God supplying my financial needs. Whatever you need, God will give it to you. You just have to trust him. If you need salvation, healing, deliverance, if you need a job, more money, a home, if you need peace, joy, love, if you need friendship, companionship, a mother, a father, whatever it is, God will give you exactly what you need. Now, it may not always come the way you expect, but it will come. Let me give you an example. On Father's Day at our church, Power and Faith Ministries, a gentleman stood up and shared with the congregation that he didn't have a father growing up. However, he's not bitter about it. He's thankful that God still loved him that God still took care of him. He also acknowledged that our pastor, Apostle Banks, has been like a father to him. So, even though this man didn't have his natural father, God has surrounded him with father figures throughout his life. To those of you who are fatherless for whatever reason, whether it's because your father is deceased or because he's in prison or suffering from alcohol or drug addiction, or because he just chooses not to be in your life. Please know that God will still give you what you're lacking, or maybe God already has. Perhaps God has blessed you with a stepfather, a, a foster parent, an uncle, an, an older brother, a godfather, a mentor, a teacher, a coach, a pastor. Instead of focusing on what you don't have and being angry or depressed about it, Focus on what you do have. Embrace the relationships God has given you and be thankful. I recognize that for some of you that may be easier said than done, but aren't you tired of carrying around all that pain? Don't you wanna be happy? Don't you wanna be free? Well, you can be if you surrender that pain to God. If you surrender that emptiness, that, that loneliness, that, that self-pity, that depression, that anger to God. I mean, really give it to him. He will deliver you uh, and God will heal your broken heart. I shared with you recently that God has blessed me with two fathers, my biological father, William Thomas, and my stepfather, Apostle Ron Banks. Although my father has always been there for me, the one thing he wasn't able to give me was spiritual guidance. According to Ephesians 6 and 4, fathers are to instruct their children in the ways of the Lord. However, my dad didn't do that. He didn't teach me how to pray or, or tell me Bible stories. 
even though he has always believed in the existence of God, he wasn't living a life submitted to God. Therefore, he couldn't give me what he didn't have. But that's okay because God filled that void. God blessed me with male pastors, including Apostle Banks, who has been my pastor for the past 20 years. Apostle Banks has been that listening ear when I needed advice from a biblical standpoint. Apostle has prayed with me and prayed for me. Apostle has discipled me and trained me in my role as a minister. Apostle has taught me the importance of having faith in God. So again, although my natural father didn't give me spiritual guidance, God still filled that void for me. During the special tribute I made to my father a couple of weeks ago, I admitted that I didn't always respect my father as I should. At that time in my life, the reasons for my behavior made perfect sense to me. However, God eventually showed me the error of my ways. I'll give you an example. I've never been a quick tempered or an argumentative person. That's just not me. However, I would find myself arguing with my father, even over something very trivial. I mean, I would really get angry, even to the point of tears. And, and I hated feeling that way. So one day while I was tearfully praying about an argument I had just had with my father, the Holy Spirit gently spoke to me and said, stop responding to everything he says. Change the subject if you have to. And that was it. That was his answer. While I was praying for God to change my dad, Lord, change his attitude. Lord, save him. Lord, deliver him. Lord, just, just make him better so he'll stop getting on my nerves. <laughs> While I was asking God to change my father, God told me to change me. Now, it wasn't the answer I was looking for, but it was the answer I needed. And when I decided to change me, <laughs> my father changed for the better. He and I stopped arguing. Our, our conversations became more pleasant, more enjoyable, and our relationship grew closer. I share that story because I want to encourage those of you who don't have a relationship with your father or a very good relationship with him. Even if he's not being the father he should be to you, obey God's word and honor him anyway. You can't control what he does or doesn't do, but you can control you. As believers in Christ Jesus, we are to be like Christ. When it comes to your relationship with your father, ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Well, I'm inclined to believe that Jesus would still show honor. How can you honor a father who hasn't been there for you? Hmm? How can you honor a father who comes around when it suits him? Well, you can honor your father by being mindful of what you say to him and how you say it. If you find that hard to do, ask God to help you and he will. You can also honor your father by being mindful of what you say about him to others. For instance, I would advise that you remove words like deadbeat or sperm donor from your vocabulary. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks including your mother. What matters is what God expects of you. Plus, according to Proverbs 18 and 21, life and death are in the power of the tongue. Your words carry weight, especially as a child of God. Maybe your father hasn't changed. Maybe your relationship hasn't improved because of what you are speaking. Now, if your father is abusive in any way, then you may need to maintain some distance for your own well-being. But even from a distance, you can still love and honor him by simply praying for him. Prayers are so effective and, and you never know how God may turn that man around and make him better, make him brand new. So again, I encourage you to trust God fully with every situation, every relationship, every concern you may have. Remember, God the Father loves you with an everlasting love. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to today's broadcast. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. 
Again, you can catch the encore of my show on Saturdays at 6 p.m. Also, please feel free to email me at Kim underscore joy 73 at yahoo.com with any questions, comments, or even prayer requests. And I invite you to visit my blog at thekimberlyjoy.com. My motto is know yourself, be yourself, love yourself. I would like to leave you with the song, He Has His Hands on You by Marvin Sapp. Until next time, please know that I love you, but God loves you the most.